Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to take a look in on the African Nightcrawlers in the Vermibag Little Mammoth. If you're new to the channel, my channel is mostly about vermicompost, worm farming with various types of worms, as well as various types of systems. So today we're going to do a deep dive on the Vermibag Little Mammoth. We're going to start out with a harvest down here. And then we're going to come back up top, and then we're going to evaluate the, what the worms are doing, and then we're going to feed them. Hang on, and I will put you down on the tripod, and we will get started. All right, I will put below how long it has been since the last time we harvested. It's probably been a little over a month, so bear with me here. I'm going to get the zippers undone, and then we will harvest one side of it. Okay, what I'm seeing here is that the bottom bottom is very dry, but then as I go up just a tiny little bit, then I am seeing that it's, it's a good, you know, it's a good moisture, probably not siftable, but definitely good to keep the microbes and whatnot alive in the castings. So far, I'm not seeing a bunch of worms. Why did I not get a garden tool? Why? All right, so we're gonna, we did check in and feed it about 20 days ago. These harvests don't take very long. I don't know why I'm not better than, you know, to get at it more often, but I'm just not. Okay, oops, okay. Need to stop harvesting this side and do the other side before I lose the structural integrity of the part that's holding it up. Okay, so now I've moved the zipper to the other side, and now I'm going to take a little bit out from over here, basically just up to the oops, just up to the zipper part here is all the more I'm digging in. Moisture is about the same on this side. Again, I am seeing seeds and whatnot, but I'm not seeing worms, so that's good. Now, unlike the urban worm bag, I'm sitting on a little, little stool, and this is a very comfortable angle for me to get at. And so that's one of the things that I like much more about this is I was able to make my own stand and put it at a level that, in particular, is comfortable for me to harvest. It might be a little bit too high for me to get into and rummage around just because I'm about 5'5", five five. but the important thing was that I wasn't flat on my back crawling around on the floor trying to harvest the urban worm bag. So in my mind, that is why this one is, is better. And not to mention, this actually has a larger surface area than the urban worm bag did. All right. Now, let me, sit. I'll take this out, and then I'll let you see what it is that I've got harvested here. Okay, here we are with the finished castings. Seems like a pretty good moisture, all in all. Let's look and see if we've got any worms in here. Don't see any worms. I do see that the very bottom was, was dry, and you've got things in here like, you know, squash seeds, pumpkin seeds, um, Got some of the uh, avocado pits. So other than that, I think in a couple of days, I'll be able to sift this and use this in my garden. Looks pretty good. I think I probably got about, you know, two gallons or about eight liters in here. And that's good. That's a good amount of harvest for, you know, what you get about once a month. All right, let's take a look at the top of the bin. All right, guys, if you're enjoying this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, here we are up at the top. So this bin has been going for well over a year now. 
And again, with the quality of the bag, the bag is a much higher quality than the Urban Worm bag. Um, I lost both the zipper and the uh, the top started to uh, the fabric started to pull away from itself. So that was another thing about the quality of the bag is that uh, it's physically made pretty good. So this is kind of my slightly over one year update review of the Urban Worm bag, Lil Mammoth. So I'll put a picture below of what we fed them 20 days ago. But we fed them a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of food. And a lot of, and a lot of um, paper bedding as well. And look at this, right here on top where I'll show you the picture, but there was a lot. <laughs> Did I say a lot? I meant a lot. So we've got an apple left here. Looks like we got an apple on this side too. Let's keep digging. Um, so we can get a find. Yep, little worm ball in the avocado shell. See, if I break these up, I don't get the cute little worm ball. But let's start, you know, accumulating food. Now, I think the food that I put in here was not frozen previously. So it's, you know, probably going to take a while. What do we got here? I don't even know. Some kind of... I don't know. I got nothing. I don't know what it is. Maybe we'll be able to see in the uh, pictures. So like I said, I'm just going to make a pile. And... As I'm doing this, hopefully everything will settle. Mm, look, more ginger. So as I'm doing this, then things will fall down into the into the bottom of the the bag. I could I actually have a um, broom handle ready if I can't get it all done. Now here's the beets. I was really thinking there was no way they were going to get into these anytime soon because they were hard as a rock, but it certainly looks like they got into that one. Uh, it's just the apples that I'm, I'm finding in here that are, you know, not really well done, but it looks like the beets were something that did go fast. So if you predicted that the beets would be, you know, fast food, it looks like you were right. I, I predicted them to be slow food. There's a little bit of a worm ball inside of something here. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep digging here. More ginger. Trying to make sure that the bottom gets completely knocked down. Some kind of a pit, maybe? No, there's the inside of an apple. See, now the moisture right here is really good. Seeing. It's not muddy, but it's, it's pretty good moisture. And that is one of the struggles with this particular bag is when it's winter and the furnace is on, I do have problems keeping the moisture up. But now that it's spring and the furnace isn't on anymore, I'm not having that problem. So I'm just gonna keep going from side to side here, collecting the food. It doesn't look like they're gonna need a lot of food but if those apples didn't make any progress in 21 days, I have to wonder if I'm only checking on them every three weeks. I don't know. I think this is the, the pineapple. Another apple. I'm going to have to get a knife and maybe break those up. Looks like they just really went through all of the, the bedding just amazingly. I mean, that is one of the traits of the African night crawlers is that they the rate that they consume bedding is insane and for as much of a pain in the butt as these worms are to me because I have to keep them in a part of the house that stays a good temperature and in the winter time that means it's got to be on the same level as the people so um, I don't know about anybody else but uh, wasn't really part of the plan to have worms in my dining room um, but here we are Okay, I think I've got that all knocked down now. It kind of feels knocked down at the bottom. So, looking at this here, they do have quite a bit of food left. 
So let me go grab a knife and then we can cut those apples open and maybe they'll go a little faster. Okay, I'm going to kind of make a bit of a, a divot here to start putting all the food in. So here's an apple. Okay. It's kind of, it's soft, but it is not, you know, the worms aren't getting into it. I think this is a plum. Worms are also, so whatever the worms are getting into, I'm not going to go at it with a knife. Don't want to have a magic act here. All right, Keenum are stopped for a little bit here, but uh, I cut up the apples, and now we're going to feed them uh, the kitchen scraps that I had available in the kitchen just now. I did cut up the um, ginger a little bit, and we do have some plant clippings. So we've got the rubber tree leaf. I think we've got some other clippings in here. Trying to break up that ginger. But then, there we go. So we're going to have some melons, so they should be super happy about that. And, yeah, even got a couple of corn chips in here. All right, let's get them some bedding. I'm going to give them probably a couple gallons. Okay. Now this bedding has been sitting for probably two or three weeks, so it is nice and ready for the worms to go ahead and gobble that up, which is what the African nightcrawlers love doing. All right, let me get their little blankie. All right, so that will keep... Um, have ventilation around there, but it also keep the moisture up for when the air conditioner starts going non-stop. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.